A quick and important update on the loss of 5656 Mike, lost back on 7 July in North Carolina. This pertains to all operators of Continental engines with direct drive alternators, maintainers as well, and also for the accident investigators to check this out. Imagine continuing on a flight with an ongoing electrical problem, perhaps an aircraft with a logbook history of issues with the alternators, and then subsequently losing all of your electronics on your flat panel display, and then having an engine failure on top of that. That would put a low time pilot, even in day VFR conditions, in a very tight spot. Now in the previous video on 5656 Mike, I talked about how the engine is separated from the electrical system, and there's virtually nothing in the electrical system that can prevent the engine from failing. However, there is one mechanical failure that is electrically related that can cause your engine to fail, and it's this drive hub that drives the direct drive alternator right off of the engine. If this drive hub fails inside the engine, it can cause engine failure, catastrophic engine failure. And now often this drive hub fails due to A, either a lack of maintenance, a lack of understanding of the system, or B, you're, you've got alternator problems and you continue to fly the aircraft with alternator problems and the very problem with your alternator may be this drive hub beginning to fail. In older aircraft designs, the alternator was often belt driven. So if you had a problem with the alternator, the belt would fry or break or stop operating and the engine would be unaffected. In this direct drive system, they use this elastomeric style drive hub. This face gear here uh, is connected directly to the crankshaft so it moves at uh, engine RPM and this gear reduction between the face gear and the drive hub assembly is three to one. So if the engine's purring along at 2,500 RPM, the alternator's spinning at 7,500 RPM. Now as you begin to have problems with your electrical system and the load is changing drastically on the alternator or anytime you're operating your electrical system and the load is changing, you're gonna have some, some feedback, mechanical feedback into the system and that's taken up by this elastomeric style drive hub. So any surges in the system is brought up by the, is taken up by this elastomeric drive hub. And if this drive hub should fail, it's gonna start dropping solid steel metal parts right into your engine. There's a service bulletin out by Continental regarding this issue. Here's the engines affected. The earlier couplings were spring-loaded couplings, and they've been superseded with this elastomer-style coupling, and it gives very careful directions of how to properly install the elastomer-style drive coupling, and a couple of important points. It's a pretty simple assembly with a washer and a castellated nut and a cotter key, but the washer is a bimetallic washer, and you must install the bearing surface, the copper color, toward the alternator. That puts it up against the softer Babbitt bushing in the alternator. Install nut and tighten to 300 foot-pounds of torque. And then if you got to get the cotter key lined up and it's not quite, don't back it off, but you can continue to torque it up, but not to exceed 450 inch-pounds of torque. And here it is, the bimetallic thrust washer with the copper side facing the alternator. Now, if that's not done correctly, you're going to start wearing this thrust washer and you're going to lose the torque on this castellated nut and the assembly is going to start wobbling. Now here's the, another important part, but I don't see any requirements for how often this needs to be done, but you need to check the slip capability of the elastomeric bearing using this tool here available by Approach Aviation. This is Jeff Simon over at um, Social Flight has designed and produced this tool and it's available here at McFarland Aviation. A lot of shops just uh, put the assembly in the vise and try to guess at the torque value or get somehow rig a torque wrench onto the top of the drive to, to try to determine this slippage. But if you get this tool, it's a couple hundred bucks, maybe 300 bucks, and um, you can accurately check the slippage on the elastomer. And here's the process or the procedure for that. 
the elastomer coupling can continue to be in service if a torque slippage check is completed. Now, it doesn't say how often you need to do this and how often you should replace this whole coupling. Some folks are saying like a pair of magnetos, you should probably replace this coupling every 500 hours. Other folks are suggesting you should check this coupling every annual inspection, which means pulling the alternator. The torque required to slip the, elast the coupling elastomer with when new must be 180 inch pounds when measured after 45 degrees of revolution at a rate of one or two degrees per second. Slippage must occur at the outer diameter of the elastomer with no apparent damage to the elastomer. For couplings in service of more than 25 hours, the slippage torque must not drop below 140 inch pounds. So that's the way you check the elastomer. Then you can reinstall the alternator back into the crankcase and make sure it fits smoothly without binding and then torque the alternator down to the crankcase to the desired torque. So maintainers, consider getting your alternator coupling toolkit from Approach Aviation. They got one for uh, different size applications here. You put your torque wrench on in the inside of here and that gets, gets a hold of the gear and then this spanner here gets a hold of the outside of the coupling so you can hold the thing solid while you check that torque. These sort of alternator coupling failures have happened before and have led to engine failure. This should be one of the first things investigators check on the loss of 5656 mic. It would put yourself in a very tight spot if you had complete electrical failure of your glass panel, cockpit, and engine failure at the same time. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.